I'm back and once again we're talking about Zeptec. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm not an EV channel. It's just I <laughs> I bought another Zeptec product. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I apologize. We'll talk about other things later. It's it's fine, it's fine. So today we're having a look at the Zeptec Sense P1 load balancing module. Let's all turn on the tube. This is hot dog soup. Please note that this video is not sponsored by Zeptec and all other products that are being shown are also no paid promotions. So the Zeptec Sense, it's a load balancing module. It's connected to the internet and it's also connected to your electrical system. And then it measures how much electricity your house is using and then adjusting the charging of your car accordingly. Your car uses a lot of power to charge and of course you don't want to overload your home system. That's basically what load balancing is and that's all this module does. The P1 port. The Zeptec Sense already was available for I think for about a year or even longer, but it wasn't compatible with P1 electrical meters. Electrical meters in the Netherlands for instance and also in other countries have a P1 connector. And this provides real-time data that you can read out and then use to control various different devices. Previous versions of the Zeptec Sense weren't directly compatible with the P1 port. You could use them, but then you had to buy a bundle which contained all kinds of adapters and energy meters that had to be connected to the Sense in order to make it work properly. So for a couple of months I kept emailing Zeptec customer support to find out when the P1 version would be available. Dear Zeptec, how's Norway nowadays? I would like to know when the P1 version of the Sense becomes available for purchase. Hugs and kisses in an old fashioned ASCII style. And yes, it was available this month. It's compatible with P1 meters and it immediately works. You don't have to buy separate meters, you don't have to buy separate cables or adapters, it just works as it is. And that is wonderful because it only cost about 99 euros for me in the Netherlands and those bundles are often way more expensive like 200 or 300 euros if you want a three phase one. And now everything is put into one little box by Zeptec. I will put the article number uh, on the screen and in the description and that is the Zeptec article number that you need. All the other Zeptec Sense modules, forget about them, forget about them, if you have a P1 meter. If you don't have a P1 meter, if for instance you have an HAN or HAN meter or an entirely different system, of course this video can also apply because the Zeptec Sense itself functions in the same way no matter how you connect it to your system. What does it do? So the Zeptec Sense P1 module, what does it do? Well, it doesn't really do much. It connects to the P1 connector of your meter and then it reads out the energy usage on any of the phases that you have. This data will then be sent over Wi-Fi to Zeptec and from there Zeptec can control your charger. If you have enough power available, your charging will go faster. And if you are loading your system, for instance, with an electrical oven or a heater or a, a dryer or a dishwasher, then of course your system may be overloaded. And then the Zeptec Sense will make sure that the charging of the car will either be stopped completely or that it will go at a lower current so that your system won't be overloaded and your house will not explode. <laughs> And if you're wondering, I have a new Zeptec Go charger. I used to have this one, but unfortunately somebody pulled a little bit too hard on my cable and then it looked like this. So I had to buy a new one. Before I go on with installing the Sense, there's a couple of things you must know. First of all, it doesn't support solar charging. Of course the power generated by solar panels you may have will go into your charger, that's no problem at all. But if for example you want to charge exclusively from your solar panels and then stop charging if the sun goes away, that is currently not possible with the Zeptec Sense. And there's another thing to consider. Even though the Zeptec Sense can support three phase load balancing, not all Zeptec chargers support a separation of the three phases. The Zeptec Go, for example, must always charge the same current on all three phases. So if you're charging on one phase and you put a very high load on another phase, the Zeptec Sense will then decrease the charge current on all three phases, even though that's not really necessary. Whereas the Zeptec Pro can charge with a different current on each phase. It's not a problem with the Zeptec Sense, but it depends on the type of charger that you have. 
specifications. The Zeptac Sense is a very small box, about 60 by 60 millimeters and 25 millimeters thick. It supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity and it has a port to connect it to your meter. There also is a micro USB port present and that's to provide power. However, some P1 meters also provide power through the P1 port. So in some cases you don't even need to power the unit. The Sense is a Wi-Fi only unit, so it doesn't have Ethernet internet connection. Also, it doesn't directly connect to your charger. It always goes through the Zeptec cloud. So local networking is not supported. The device comes in a small cardboard box. A user manual in several languages is included and also a cable to connect it to your meter. There are unfortunately no screw holes, but some adhesive stickers are included to attach it to a wall somewhere. Installation. Installation of the Zeptec Sense P1 is really very simple. There's just one cable, you plug it into your P1 meter port and there you go, now it works. We're using the Zeptec app to install the Zeptec Sense. It's really very easy. You select to install a new product, you select Zeptec Sense, and then you scan the QR code, which is on the device. Then you wait for a while until the light goes on, and then you tap on the install Zeptec Sense button. After entering the pin code, it will ask you to connect to Wi-Fi. For me, it showed sort of a weird error message, but in the end it went away and I could successfully connect. After connecting it to the Wi-Fi network, you have to enter your main fuse size. Now we get a step that was a little bit of a problem for me, because the Zeptec Sense needs to be connected to an installation and it needs to be associated with a charger within that installation. The app showed me a little spinning wheel, but there were no installations coming up, so it couldn't find my installation. Many unbearable minutes later. Fortunately, there was a button to say pair with a charger instead, and when I selected that, I could pair it with my Zeptec Go, and then it worked fine. So that's a little bit of a glitch, but in the end, it worked. Installation is now complete, and I can find the Zeptec Sense in my app, and there's a screen with some settings where you can disable it and change the Wi-Fi network. There's also an option to remove the device, but that didn't work for me. Instead of removing it, the device is simply disabled, but you cannot really delete it. And it also cannot be deleted from the Zeptec portal, the online web version. So this is a bug in the app that needs to be fixed. So now the Zeptec Sense is installed, it's in the app, it's in my installation, I can find it in the backend and it's actually sending data. So now I'm quite convinced that it will actually work. Let's charge the car. Load balancing. To test the load balancing, I'm using the Home Wizard P1 app because it gives me a live feed of what my three faces are doing at any moment in time. So my car is charging now and here you can see the usage on each of my three phases. On the left we have phase one and then phase two and phase three next to it. As you can see, I'm charging on the first phase with uh, about 3.2 kilowatts. Now, to test the load balancing, I have to put a load in my house and then see if charging will decrease or even completely stop. And to test this, I just put two big pans of water on my induction stove and I put them both on the turbo power mode, so they really use a lot of power. So I'm switching on the first pan of water and as you can see, it uses about three kilowatts. Now, when I'm switching on the second pan, I'm going to six kilowatts and this is too much for the system. This is basically now overloading my system. And indeed, after a couple of seconds, we can see that the charger, which is charging on phase one here, goes down to 1.2 kilowatts. So the charge current is now actually less than half of what it was. So the Zeptec Sense correctly responded and my car is charging now at a lower speed. If I switch off the pans, here I'm switching off the first pan and later on I'm switching off the second one, I am finding that the system doesn't really respond to that. The car kept charging at a very low value of 1.2 kilowatts. It didn't go up again. So I tested a little bit more, I switched on the pans again, I put another 6 kilowatts of load on my system, and then the Zeptec Sense decided this is just too much and it paused charging entirely. I switched to the Zeptec app and I could see that charging had been paused. 
Of course, it doesn't respond immediately, but it knows when to lower the current and it also knows when to pause the charging completely. Now, when is charging going to be resumed? I'm really very curious. And I try to find out when and how is the charger going to resume charging again. And I couldn't really find that. It. It's not in the manual. The Zeptec doesn't tell us. Uh, I just waited for 10 minutes. I waited for 15 minutes. I waited a lot of fucking minutes later. And it still didn't resume charging. So I had to contact Zeptec support. Dearest Zeptec, how come Zeptec Sense is not resuming my charging? Love as... So, okay, Zeptec told me that there is an evaluation period. If the load on the system decreases, it waits a while before it starts charging again or before it increases the charge again. And for large installations with multiple chargers, this is allegedly set to 30 or 45 minutes, but I don't really believe it. Because I waited for an hour, and I waited for two hours, and I waited for three hours. Jeez, that is a lot of waiting. And still it wouldn't resume charging. But luckily Zeptec told me that they could change that evaluation period. And they changed it to 10 minutes for me. This setting cannot be done by yourself. You cannot set it in the app. You cannot set it in the portal. So that's a thing to consider. By default it's on a very high value. So if you have a high load in your house and your car stops charging, you possibly need to wait for a couple of hours before it resumes. And I think that's a bit of a flaw. Of course you can contact Zeptec and tell them to set it to 10 minutes or to 5 minutes or whatever. Probably they won't set it to 1 minute because then the system would be bouncing up and down too much. But I think that should be configurable and I think Zeptec should explain this. After all this was fixed and after I understood how it worked, my car actually resumed charging. And for those of you who watched my other Zeptec videos, I've got two other videos about the Zeptec Go. And I told people, my car doesn't resume charging, but now it does. It does, it works now. I don't know, perhaps I didn't understand or perhaps I did something wrong, but now even my car resumes charging. I did a couple of other tests. I did a test with uh, switching on my oven. I did a test with switching on my oven on another phase. I did a test with switching on my oven on another phase and an electric heater on another phase. And each time the Zeptec Sense correctly responded by lowering the charge uh, current or by pausing charging completely. And after I waited 10 to 15 minutes, my evaluation period set by Zeptec, it worked all the time, it worked every time. Thank you Zeptec, the new evaluation period is very lovely. Sloppy wet kit. So if you're a normal regular person and you're not an electrician like me, of course you don't have to worry about all this. It will simply just work, except for that evaluation period, which is by default set to a really high value, I think. Maybe we should all know that. Maybe we should all contact Zeptec and tell them, come on, set it to a normal value instead of three hours. What the hell are you doing? Going offline. The final thing is that if the Zeptec Sense goes offline, what will happen if your system is overloaded, but the Zeptec Sense is not connected to the internet, or it doesn't have power, or it's broken, or it's just offline? Well, Zeptec has a solution for that. In the portal, not in the app, in the portal, you can set a minimum available current on each of the phases that you have. And if the Zeptec Sense is disconnected, it will detect this and then it will lower the charge. I think that's a really neat feature. Of course, if you never sign into the portal, which most people don't do, you wouldn't know that this feature exists. I think Zeptec probably should put these settings in the app because it's really important. If you trust that this thing is protecting your house and uh, somebody switches on five ovens and six dishwashers while the Zeptec Sense is offline, it should pause charging. I set mine to 6 amps on each phase and then I disconnected the Zeptec Sense to see what would happen. And it took the Zeptec portal 45 minutes to detect that my sensor was offline. And even worse, the charger simply kept on charging on its highest current. So the system didn't really work. 
And of course, I contacted Zeptec about this and they told me, well, that of course, that shouldn't be the case. It should work correctly. So I actually worked with them to do a test uh, and I disconnected my Zeptec Sense again at a specific moment, they told me, and so they could see all the data coming in in the back end. They are now trying to find out an answer for this and a solution. Probably this goes to Norway or another uh, developer or whatever technical people uh, higher up. And I, I don't have an answer yet. If they send me an answer and a solution after this video is being recorded, I will add a little piece to the, to the video explaining how it was solved. If that's not in this video, they haven't solved it yet. Conclusion. So that is the Zeptec Sense P1 load balancing unit. I think it's a great little device. It's easy to install and it basically just works. Of course, I had a couple of glitches while installing it and I had the uh, problem where the backend wouldn't respond when it uh, went offline, but I'm sure Zeptec is working on it. Would I recommend it? Yes, but Zeptec needs to fix that evaluation period and needs to fix the other small bugs that I mentioned. I'm sure they are working on it, but just in case, if you're in doubt, do not buy it as yet. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, a comment or a subscribe. Look at that, 500, 500 subscribers. I'm not celebrating yet because most of the time I get some unsubscribers every now and again. So I'm afraid we'll go back to 499. But it doesn't matter. If you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching. Have a nice day and well, enjoy your Zeptec Sense P1 if you intend to buy one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.